Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a cold morning. I woke up to a cold morning. Yesterday the Lord blessed me with sun in the sky and I got to sit outside and uh, listen to Esther. Got Esther completely finished. Now I'm on the book of uh, Job is the next book. Uh, going through the Old Testament listening to Alexander Scorvey read the Bible as I sit outside and pause sometimes and talk to the Lord about the scriptures but I really love listening to Alexander Scorvey reading the whole Bible. I really do spend a lot of my time doing that. So yesterday the sun came out, it got warmed up, I was excited, maybe we're going to get some warm weather for a while. And then I woke up this morning, everything's cloud covered again, and it was cold this morning. So, um, what we're doing here, Brothers of Christ, I had some brethren that the last video that I did, um, the Ten Virgins, it sparked some questions, and then I got a question in the email. So I got three questions to respond to that I wanted to respond to on video as well as respond to the brethren. Um, but one of those questions was, uh, I got it from this brother in Christ, where do we get from that a trump is the sound of a trumpet again? Just curious. That's a good question, okay? Because at first when I heard that, I was like, wait a second. You know what? I've heard someone say it, and I've never actually looked into it myself. And it didn't take long, but I looked into it and was like, okay, that's where we get it. We're going to get into that. But first, I'm going to start with how the, the, the failing that I had at first was, is I heard somebody else say it, therefore it has to be absolute truth. When you start relying on traditions of men, church fathers, the wisdom of this world, what does God say about the wisdom of this world? So the first thing you would think of is Trump. Well, how do we know the definition of Trump? Well, let's, 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 oh no, let's not do this. Let's go to the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Now, as we do that, brothers and sisters Christ, understand, I think it's a great teaching tool for learning. I do. Because the Webster's 1828 Dictionary that I have, I got one on the computer right here. But I've also got the solid book, the hard book, the paper book. Um, it's a great teaching tool. Uh, there's been some times that I've used it because the Bible uh, oftentimes, we'll, as we get into the study, will define itself. But sometimes the world tries to creep in and, does, and give their own definitions. Uh, this is one of those times, I've, I've said this times and times again, Brothers of Christ, the Webster's 1828 Dictionary is not our final authority. This is our final authority. Can we use the 1828 Dictionary as a teaching tool to help learn some of the words that are in the Bible? Absolutely. But you've got to be careful because there's been, there's been times, Brother and Sister Christ, and we've throughout this ministry, if you follow this ministry, well, God's ministry, my, my blessing from the Lord to be part of God's ministry, but this YouTube channel, if you follow this YouTube channel long enough, you realize there's times where I agree with the 1828 Dictionary, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and there's times where I believe the Bible disagrees with the 1828 Dictionary. So let's read it real quick. We read here, Trump, it's a noun. Okay, it's a noun. Okay, and they say the first definition, a trumpet, a wind instrument of music, or a poetical word used for trumpet. It is seldom used in prose and common discourse, but is used in scripture when it's seemingly peculiarly appropriate to the grandeur of the subject. And then it tries to give 1 Corinthians 15.52 and 1 Thessalonians 4.16. See, the Webster's 1828 Dictionary says it's a trumpet. Therefore, it has to be a trumpet. Right? That's what trump is. It's just trumpet. It's the, it's the trumpet without the E-T. Yes? Yes? When I look through, and you can read through them, <coughs> if you've got uh, Webster's 1820 Dictionary, if you've got the uh, website like I do online, you read through all these definitions, then you get a card game like the Trump, a card game that they've turned it into a card game and everything. But when you get to the very, very bottom, very bottom, all this list of stuff, the very bottom, it says Trump, verb intransitive, to blow a trumpet. You mean the noise that the trumpet makes? The trumpet sitting there by itself is not a trump. It's a trumpet, but it's not a trump if it's sitting there by itself. But to blow a trumpet, when you start blowing air through the trumpet and it makes a sound, 
that's also, they. Had, I believe God did this because he's put the true definition in there. What I believe is the true definition, which we're going to find out later, is backed by the scriptures. But his brother's asking, well, how can we tell? Well, if you go off the 1828 dictionary, uh, Webster's Dictionary, it says it's just a trumpet. And you know why the lost world, these post and mid-trib, love it being a trumpet? Because if it's a trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, and a trumpet in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, it's the exact same event of what's happening at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble when Jesus is coming back. It's the same event. But now if it's not a trumpet, uh-oh, it's not the same event. And they don't like that. They try to make the trump out to be a trumpet. And the Webster's, when you've hit definition number one, it, it, it backs their story. It's a trumpet. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a trumpet. It's a trumpet. But you get down to the very bottom definition there. It says trump. Verbal entrance. I don't care about the entrance. But it just says another way trump is used is to blow an instrument. It's the sound that comes out of the instrument. But they hide it at the very bottom. So they say, well, the dictionary says it's a trumpet. Therefore, it has to be a trumpet. Okay. Another thing that they'll say is maybe it's just the way it was translated, like Hebrew to English versus Greek to English. What are you saying that? What I mean by that is, is a good example is Jonah 117. And Jonah 117 says, Now the Lord hath prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, spelled J-O-N-A-H. And Jonah, J-O-N-A-H, was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. They say, well, when you get to Matthew 12, if you've got your King James Bibles, Matthew 12, 39, it says, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. J-O-N-A-S. It's Jonah, but Jonah in the Old Testament is Hebrew coming to English. When it's spelled that way, when it's spelled Jonas, it's Greek coming to English. It says, for Jonas, J-O-N-A-S, was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Well, you see, you know, in the Old Testament, it was trumpet translation, going from uh, Hebrew to English. In the New Testament, Greek to English, it, it comes out as trump, which just means trumpet. It's just the way it's translated. Really? Did you know that in the Old Testament, the word trumpet is mentioned 52 times in the Old Testament? In the New Testament, uh-oh, trumpet's mentioned nine times. Trumpet with an E-T is mentioned nine times. So that can't be the case. It's mentioned nine times. Did you know that, uh, and here's, the, here's the key to all this. Did you know the word trump is only mentioned twice in the whole Bible? It's not mentioned in the Old Testament. Trump. It's not mentioned. The word Trump is not mentioned in the New Testament except twice in two passages: 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty two, First Thessalonians four sixteen. It's the only two times. Interesting. When the body of Christ is being caught up, it's the only times that it's mentioned. <coughs> it's not mentioned. In the end of the book of Revelation, towards the end, when Jesus Christ is coming down, Trump is not mentioned. Okay. And like I want to point out, what the post and mid-trip believers like to do is make 1 Corinthians 15, 52 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 the same as what is going on during the time of Jacob's trouble. When you hear about Jesus Christ coming back and trumpets are sounding, <coughs> music is playing, it's triumphant, the king is coming back. They try to make it the same thing. I apologize for my coughing. It's cold this morning. Anytime I have cold air coming in, it's I'm trying to warm up the house, is that uh, I tend to cough a little bit when I got cold, really cold air. I don't know if I'm not the, hopefully I'm not the only one that does that. But um, really cold air gets me to cough sometimes. But brothers and sisters Christ, is that the case? Are they right? Is, is, is Trump just another word for trumpet? Okay. Brothers and sisters Christ, for those of you who love the Word of God, who wants to hear what the Word of God says and not what you know, the world says, traditions of men say, culture says, the wisdom of this world, and who wants to know what the actual Bible says? 
I do. I also want to say, if you don't want to know what the Bible actually says, then this won't, won't benefit you because this isn't your final authority. If the Webster's, like I said, the Webster's 1820 Dictionary, if it tells you what you want to hear, it's your final authority. If it tells you what you don't want to hear, it's not the final authority. It's not the final authority, period. It might line up with this book, which means this book is right, or it might go against this book, which means this book is still right. That's wrong. Same thing with me. I might line up with this book. This book is right. I'm, I'm not right. This book is right. If I don't line up with this book, I'm wrong. Not this book. But people have this attitude that the book has to be wrong. So who wants to know what the Bible actually says? I know this is a long about rape. I'm sorry, Brother Christ. I just had to push this. You start looking in all these areas. Did we need to look in all these areas? What men say. What scholars say. With the web, sometimes, like I said, you can get really stumped and sometimes go to the Webster's 1820 Dictionary, but oftentimes I don't have to even hardly ever use it. Why? Because this will pretty much explain itself, brothers and sisters of Christ. Here's a great example of this. Let's read 1 Corinthians 15, 52. You want the tr definition of what Trump is? Someone asked, how do we get the definition? That's what this brother in Christ asked. How do we get the definition? Where do we get from the, a Trump is the sound a trumpet makes? Just curious. Well, we know Trump is related to trumpet, okay, when it comes to the English language. Now we go to the Bible and say, okay, how do we know it's the noise? Uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15. Let's get this knocked out. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15.52 Here's where we read it. We can go back to 51. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, real quick for a second, just to throw this as an idea as we get into the next verse. Uh, you have an alarm clock in the morning. If you're asleep, you're asleep. But what wakes you out of your sleep? The alarm clock just set in there, visually have an alarm clock set in there, or the actual sound that the alarm clock makes. Hmm. Let's get into uh, verse 52. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. You say, where do we get the definition that trump is the sound that a trumpet makes? Right there. Right there. At the last trump, and here's the definition, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And you keep reading if you want, for the corruption must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. But we see there, the definition is clearly there. It's the sound that the trumpet makes. The last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. See, the Bible defines itself pretty easily. Now, this sound that's happening, it's not an actual trumpet playing music. What is this sound that's actually about? Remember 2 Timothy 2.15 where it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Turn to uh, Revelation 4.1. Revelation 4.1. So there's where you get the definition of trump right there. Revelation 4.1. Then you turn to Revelation 4.1. What's Revelation? Remember, this is John. Remember Peter kind of uh, uh, being envious or overstepping his bounds? And he's like, Lord, what do you have for this man? Point at John. What do you have for him? And Jesus says, if he should tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Did John get to see the catching away of the body of Christ? Did he get to see the time of Jacob's trouble? Did he get to see Jesus come back triumphant in the to the, at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, going into the day of the Lord, the kingdom of heaven? Yes, he did. He got to see it, and that's what we're reading here. So Revelation chapter 4. Remember Thess 1 Thessalonians. When we get to Revelation chapter 4, I believe this is a parallel of what's going on in 1 Thessalonians 4.16. Right. No, I'm sorry. Uh, really, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. This is a parallel of what's going on there. How do we know this? Webster's 8, uh, Revelation, sorry, Revelation 4, 1. After this, I took and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, the first voice which I heard, was that of a trumpet talking with me. 
It's a voice. So when you're reading in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, the last trump for the trumpet shall sound, what's it talking? It's saying, it's saying there's a voice that's calling us home. Which said, come up hither. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. A trumpet talking with me. Now here's the thing. We always think that a trumpet, we think of the sound of the trumpet. But I think more than anything, the reason this is likened to a trumpet is because I, was, I played the, uh, the, the tuba and the trombone and band when I was in high school. Okay? I know a little bit about the instruments. And the thing about a trumpet, why do you think they use trumpets in war? Why do you think they use trumpets? I was in also in the I also was in the Air Force. Okay. Why do you think they use trumpets? Like the bugle call. Why do they use that? Why? Because the trumpet, the sound that comes out of the trumpet, it projects. It goes the distance. Imagine God talking to you from way up there down to here. Remember God the Father saying, this is my son of whom I am well pleased? And the people heard it down here? I believe it's this right here. As if it were a trumpet. His voice projects, it goes out, and everyone hears him. Now, we know in the catch and way the body of Christ happens, the lost world hears thunder, but the saved sinners all over the world and the children that are under the age of accountability hear their names being called saying, come up hither. God's voice projects throughout the whole world. That's what I mean. That's what I believe this is mean when it's saying a trumpet. Like I said, in battle, it's so noisy, it's so loud, there's fighting going on, and yet they would use trumpets or instruments that are like trumpets the signal, okay, this, this noise, do, 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 means charge. Do, 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 that means run away. I'm just making this up. I'm just saying there was different signals that they used with horns to say charge, retreat, regroup. Why did they use these types of instruments? Because it projected. People could hear it amongst all the noise and garbage of this world. We're going to be able to hear God's voice say, Philip Newton, come up hither. It's going to project. That's what I believe is going on there. But there's the definition there again. Trumpet talking with me. If I heard it, what is a trumpet talking with me? So this trump that it's talking about is the noise. I believe how it projects. The trumpet projects like a trumpet. The noise, how it makes the noise. But it's not just a noise. It's somebody speaking. Okay. What is the trump of God? Which I titled this video. What is the trump of God? Okay. 1 Thessalonians 4.16. This is where we get it again. Remember, this is the second time the word trump is mentioned. 1 Thessalonians 4.16. 1 Thessalonians. four sixteen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Once again, it, defends, it, it defines itself. With a shout, with the voice of, of the archangel, and with the trump of God. It's a voice. It's a shout. It's a voice. And then you see trump of God. It's noise, but not just any noise. It's a voice. It's someone speaking. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It happens before that. I mean, we, we're not going into the hardcore study. We've already got studies on the church, the body of Christ leaves before the time of Jacob's trouble. But it's a comfort to know that we are not appointed to God's wrath, and we're not going through that time period. We get called home, Trump. We get called home. You know what the parallel passage is that helps, helps more strengthen that this happens before the time of Jacob's trouble? Turn to Revelation 1.10. Revelation 1.10. Revelation 1.10. Revelation 1.10. Revelation 1.10. What's the trump of God, what I believe? Revelation 1.10.
Revelation 1.10, once again. Moses says, trump of God. Now part of me wanted to use the Revelation 4.16 for this one, but I chose Revelation 1.10 for a reason. When you get to Revelation 1, chapter 10, or chapter 1, verse 10, look what it says. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Remember it says trump of God. First we just said trump. Now it says trump of God. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and, be, and heard behind me as a, a great voice as of a trumpet. A great voice as a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Trump of God. What's the trump of God? His voice. God's voice coming down. Now we know that the whole definition of trump, it's a sound that the trumpet makes, but how it projects. But it's not just talking about the noise of the trumpet, it's talking about a voice that's like a trumpet. But it's not only talking about a voice that was like a trumpet, it's talking about the voice of God. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. What's happening in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, the trump of God? It's the voice of God calling down, saying, Philip Newton, it's time, come up hither, come up hither. It's God speaking to his children. It's time to come home, the catching away of the body of Christ. These are the, the events in the end of the time of Jacob's trouble where Jesus is coming back and you hear it talk about trumpet. Trumpets are playing. It's not talking about voices. It's not talking about someone talking. It's talking about, it's, it's talking about saying, hey, the king's coming. Sound the trumpet. The king is coming. There's a difference. There's a big difference. Okay. So I'm sorry, brother in Christ. I didn't mean to make it that long, but... That's the true definition. That's how we get the true definition of Trump. You compare Scripture with Scripture, and you get the definition inside. It's talking about a voice. It's talking about a sound. It's not talking about a brass instrument that's sitting there without any air blowing through it. A trumpet's still a trumpet whether the air is blowing through it. But there is no trump unless air is going through the instrument. There is no trump. If there's no noise, there's no sound coming out of that instrument, there's no trump. And that's what they can't seem to handle, okay? I am Alpha and Omega, a great voice as if it were a trumpet. What's that voice he heard? Who's the Alpha and Omega? Who's the beginning and the end, the first and the last? Who's the Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come? It's God Almighty talking to John. It's God Almighty, the Father, through Jesus Christ, saying, It's time to come home. Enough's enough. And I'm looking forward to that day, brothers and sisters, and I know a lot of you are too. So, what's the definition of Trump? This is the best way to figure out the definition of things, brothers and sisters, Christ. Just going off the scriptures. If you hit a hard spot, yes, the Webster's 1828 Dictionary can be a great tool. Uh, concordances can be a great tool. But remember, the Webster's 1828 Dictionary is not the final authority. What's the final authority? The Word of God is. Not traditions of men, not scholars, not feelings and opinions, but the Word of God. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, brothers and Christ, especially in these last days. Especially in these last days. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.